Hello guys and welcome back to the sixth video of our playlist called as Graph. So in our last two video, we have seen in detail that how we should traverse the graph with the help of the BFS and the DFS algorithm. So I hope you have clearly understood that how to traverse a graph because without knowing how to traverse a graph with the help of the BFS and the DFS approach, it is meaningless to proceed further. So I hope you have clearly understood the last two video and we will proceed further with this one. And this video is all about a problem statement that I have given you in the previous video. And that was try to implement the same BFS and the DFS algorithm in a disconnected graph. So I hope you already know what is a disconnected graph. So if you look carefully, this is actually the example of a disconnected graph where all the nodes of the graph cannot be traversed from a single starting point. What I mean to say, so here you can see, this is actually an example of a graph. And within this graph, there are three components. One is this component, one is this, and another is this one. So all the subgraphs that are formed within a complete graph is called as components. So here, this is a component, this is another component, and this is another component. And these three components together form a particular graph. And since this component one, two and three cannot be traversed from one another. That is why this is called a disconnected graph. Means there is no connection between the two components of the graph. So this is why it is called as a disconnected graph. So let's see how we can solve the problem of traversing this graph with the help of the BFS and DFS approach. So if you remember clearly in our previous example, this was a graph that we were using for understanding the BFS and the DFS algorithm. So here, if you remember, all the BFS and the DFS traversal need a starting point and the starting point can be anything. It totally depends on your choice. So what we were doing at that time, one was the starting point. And based on the algorithm, that is whether it was a BFS or a DFS traversing, we were traversing this graph. So in case of the DFS traversal, what we were doing, starting from the node one, we were going to the node two, followed by node three, followed by node four and node five. So this was one of the way to traverse the graph using the DFS algorithm. But if you look carefully in this example, here, whether we are using the starting point as one or we are using the starting point as three, we were able to visit all the nodes of the graph. Because here you can say we have reached one, node two, node three and node four and node five. So all the nodes are covered and this was quite simple. But the problem happens when your graph is not connected because at that time you cannot traverse from the node five to node six since there is no connection between the two. So how to solve it is the main question. So here we will see how to solve the problem of traversing a disconnected graph. And believe me, after I tell you the trick of how to solve this problem, you will hardly take 10 minutes to code this thing because I assume you already know how to implement the BFS and the DFS algorithm. And if you know that thing, this is just a one line of code that you have to do to solve this problem. So without wasting much time, let's see how to solve this problem. So let's take the example that this is our disconnected graph. And let's solve this with the help of a simple analogy. So let's assume these nodes are nothing but a potholes. And these are some of the drains or the pipes that are connected between these holes. So one is connected to two, two is connected to five, three and all these things. So these are nothing but the pipes that are connected between these potholes. So whenever we were trying to solve the BFS and the DFS algorithm, what we were doing, the first thing that we did is we have selected a starting point. And from there, based on the connection between the nodes, we were traversing one after the another. Now let's assume that whenever I'm telling that we will start the traversal from the node one, what I mean to say is we have to pour water, okay, into these potholes. Means since we are starting from node one, what we will do, we will simply pour enough water into these potholes. So the node one is filled up. Okay, now what will happen simply, since there is a pipe between node one and two, obviously the water will flow inside the pipe and whatever the node it is connected with, whatever the pothole it is connected, obviously the water will traverse to that node. So once we are pouring enough water on node one, the water is traversing to node two. And once it reaches the node two, node two will get completely filled. Similarly, since another pipe is connected between node one and five, so also water will flow along this line and it will fill up node 5. So you can see across this pipe, the water is flowing to all the nodes. Similarly from 2, it is traversing to 3 and from here, it is traversing to 4. 
So right now at this stage, all the portholes that are connected across each other are now filled up. So this was the basic approach of the BFS and the TFS traversing. Now, if I need to traverse the next component that is six, seven and eight, what I have to do? I have to again put water to one of this node, right? Because we have to traverse that. So what we'll do, we will maybe put water on this node that is node six. And once the node six is filled up, means once this portal is filled up, the water will flow across this pipe and it will fill up seven and it will fill up then to eight. Similarly, once we are done with this process, we have to again iterate and what we'll do, we'll check that whether any nodes are pending or not. And here you can see, we have another component that is nine and 10. What we'll do, again, we will put some water over here, means maybe on the node nine and whatever the node that are connected to the node nine, means node 10 that will also get filled up. Means right now you can see all the nodes are filled up with water, means all the nodes are visited right now. And this is actually the core concept by which we will solve this problem. So if you have understood it correctly, changing the initial starting point of the BFS and the DFS algorithm will actually solve this problem. This is so simple. So if you remember, whenever we were implementing the BFS or the DFS algorithm, we were giving the starting point, the fixed starting point, which was either zero or one. But in this case, Whenever the component is disconnected, means whenever the graph is disconnected at that time, this thing will vary. Means we cannot tell that only it should start from either zero or one. Rather, what we will do, we will check all the nodes over here and see whether that is visited or not. And if it is not visited, then what we will do, we will simply start the BFS or the DFS from that point itself. So what it means at the very starting point, we will, for example, start the BFS algorithm from node one, which is, which was this one. And if you remember, once we start a BFS traversal, it will internally cover all the connected nodes within itself. So once we start from the node one, the BFS algorithm that we have learned, it will print out all the nodes, means one, two, three, four, five is all the nodes that are connected to this node one will be the part of our answer. Now on the next step, since it is a disconnected graph, we will again check that whether we can start another BFS iteration from node two or not. And here in this case, you can see node two is already visited, so we cannot start. So we will change the BFS from node two to node three. Again, we will check that whether we can start the BFS from node three or not. So node three is already visited, so we cannot start. So in this way, we will keep on iterating our starting point. And once it reached the sixth node, that is this node, we can again start our iteration. And here at that time, once we start with the BFS of six, internally it will go to the node seven and eight. So seven and eight will be printed. Similarly, we will traverse these two nodes. So this is actually the basic logic of how to solve or how to traverse the disconnected graph using a BFS and TFS algorithm. And regarding solving this problem with the help of the code, that is only a one line change. It is just how you are calling the function. That is the only thing that will change in the entire code. Other than that, there is not a single line of code in the BFS on the DFS logic that will change to solve this problem. And if you understood this problem, believe me, you have already solved one of the medium problem of the lit code. But before going into the lit code, let's first see what are the simple change that you need to make in the BFS and the DFS algorithm to solve this problem. So we'll go to our code editor. So if you remember, this was actually the DFS code that we have learned in our previous video. I have not changed a single line of code over here. So what we were doing, this is our DFS logic of traversing the graph and this is the data structure called as graph. So this was a previous implementation of how we have solved the DFS algorithm. But the only thing that you have to know that here during the previous implementation, here we were hard coding the starting point of our traverse. Means we were starting from the node one. But since as I've told you before, this is a disconnected graph. So our source node cannot be a static one. So it will be a variable one. So what we will do, we will do a simple modification over here. So we will simply write a for loop over here, starting from node one to node 10. Because at this time we know we have 10 node in our disconnected graph. So we'll write a for loop from one to 10. And over here, what we will do, we will simply call this DFS traversal logic, but instead of hard coding with one, 
we will pass as i means this is actually the variable thing means the starting point is keep on changing on each and every iteration and if you remember for doing a dfs or a pfs traversal we need a visitor set to know that which of the nodes are already visited and this will be our key component to check from where we can start our traversal so what we will do instead of simply passing the hash set over here what we'll do we will simply create an object over here called as visitor set and here we will pass it like this and here before passing the starting variable on each and every iteration what we have to check we have to simply say that whether that node from where we are trying to start our BFS or the DFS algorithm whether that is already visited or not and if it is not visited then we will start otherwise we will simply skip it so what we will do we will simply do a check over here that whether the current node is already visited or not and that's it this is the only three lines of change that you have to do in your existing dfs and the bfs logic to implement this algorithm for our disconnected graph so let's run it and let's see whether it is working fine or not but before that what we have to do we have to also construct the graph so what we'll do here we will first construct the graph so here you can see these are the other two components of the graph which are node 6 and 7, 6 and 8. You can see 6 is connected to 7 and 6 is connected to 8. Similarly, we have the node 9 and 10 which is also disconnected from this component and this component. So let's run it and let's see with the help of this change whether we are able to visit the other five nodes or not. So we'll click on run and create. You can see we are able to visit all the nodes of the graph. That is 1 to 10, whether it is connected or disconnected. The only change what we did, the way we were calling the TFS algorithm, we have changed that only. That is, instead of hard coding it with the value of 1 or 0, we are right now iterating over all the nodes just by checking whether that node is visited or not. Simply, that is the only change that is required to implement the BFS and the DFS logic for a disconnected graph. So this was the way we should do for the DFS. I will also show you how to do for the BFS algorithm. Let me copy that code also. So if you remember, this was the logic to do a BFS traversal. This is the thing. So the only thing that you have to do in case of BFS traversal is instead of declaring the visitor set within this body, we will simply pass this visitor set as a parameter. That's the way we have done for the DFS algorithm. So what we'll do, we will simply copy it from here and we will simply get rid of this. And instead of calling the BFS traversal, right now what we'll do, we will call the DFS traversal. And everything remains the same. Let's click on run and create. Here you can see, right now we are calling the BFS traversal and the output is also the same. Means we are able to visit all the nodes of the disconnected graph. So I hope you have clearly understood that what is the difference between traversing in a connected and a disconnected graph. And the only thing, the only change that you have to do is the way we are calling the function. And if you have liked this video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my channel and you are always ready for your next interview. Now in the next video, we will see that with the help of the same code, exactly Ditto code, we will solve one of the medium problem on the lead code. So stay tuned with me for the next video where we will start with solving the problems on the lead code and we will see how easy it is to solve all the problems on the graph algorithm. So see you on our next video. Thank you.